Welcome, it's Dino. In this video, I want to explain the biggest problem of all smart blockchains and why it is inevitable that almost every smart blockchain out there will face this massive problem. And the massive problem is causing a symptom which is called high gas fees. So what is causing the high gas fees? For example, currently we're using Uniswap on Ethereum network. And if we just simply want to swap Ethereum to any other coin out there and we click swap here, uh, you can see that the gas fee is now $65 for this one simple transaction. And you also have to pay liquidity providers a fee on top of this here. But if you want to make sure that your transaction goes through, you probably want to increase the limit of gas that you use. So you probably have to end up using about $70, $80 to make sure that your transaction is actually broadcasted to the uh, Ethereum blockchain on time. So $80 for one single transaction. That's a massive fee in my opinion and uh, it's not good for anybody who wants a nice good decentralized uh, decentralized finance experience and this limits for people um, to enter a blockchain because they don't have the capital to actually use it uh, efficiently and to make the most gains but this problem is inherent in almost every single smart blockchain and almost every single smart blockchain will become congested eventually and I will explain exactly why that will happen in almost every situation and at the end of the video I'll give you also a few opportunities and uh, I will basically talk about one opportunity that I talked about yesterday's video uh, on Monday's video that I will be not be participating in that one uh, so I'll talk about those uh, at the end of the video but anyway let's talk about the real issue here and it is this. So if you take a look at the gas spent for transactions on Uniswap and SushiSwap, you can see that arbitrage bots take the biggest chunk. And you can see one inch is causing a lot of uh, transactions on uh, gas fees as well on Uniswap. But these are almost probably using arbitrage bots as well. So most of the transactions of the whole network are actually arbitrage bots. And that is how it's intended to be. Because on Uniswap, you have these liquidity pools. And when you put money in the liquidity pools 50-50 ratio, so you have, for example, Ethereum and USDC. Uh, if somebody buys Ethereum, it actually extracts that Ethereum from that liquidity pool and it adds USDC back into the pool. So the balance of the liquidity pool is shaken. And to keep that balance uh, stable, arbitrage bots are supposed to balance the equation so that the price volatility doesn't go overboard and arbitrage bots are needed for this uh, amm uh, automated market maker system to actually work and now why is this a problem so let's say this is uniswap here and you have arbitrage bots running on centralized exchanges and uniswap that's fine but now we have another uh, protocol. Let's call this SushiSwap. So now you have Uniswap and SushiSwap. Let's say Ethereum here is $390 and here it's $410. If you have a, uh, uh, an arbitrage bot, you probably want to uh, buy Ethereum here and sell it here just to make the $20 price difference for yourself. And you want to bid high gas fee for that transaction. So your transaction gets uh, on the your transaction gets broadcasted before any other bot on the market. So the arbitrage bots basically bid on the gas fee price to go higher and higher and higher so that they can make the uh, price difference here. So this is one connection. But now if you have another uh, decentralized, decentralized exchange, let's call this Balancer. Now you have an arbitrage opportunity between Balancer and Uniswap. And if you have... Uh, you also have an uh, arbitrage opportunity between Balancer and SushiSwap as well. So you have two more connections. And if you add one more uh, decentralized exchange, then you have a connection or an arbitrage opportunity between Uniswap and let's call this Curve because they have a stablecoin swap over there. So Curve and uh, Uniswap have a connection. Then you have a SushiSwap and Curve uh, arbitrage bot opportunity. And then you have a Balancer and Curve arbitrage opportunity. And as more decentralized exchanges pop up in the network, you have an exponentially growing amount of arbitrage opportunities on the network. So the more uh, money and liquidity is on the network and the more decentralized exchanges there are, the more arbitrage opportunities there will be in an exponential scale. 
and it is very very profitable for people to run these arbitrage bots and it is very 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 profitable for developers to just fork another Uniswap or fork another sushi swap and launch their own coin and make their own twist in that so they can create their own decentralized exchange and make a ton of money uh, by doing that. So the, as you can see, there's an inherent incentive to just congest the whole network. And this is the inherent problem because there's no governance system to allow more uh, uh, de decentralized exchanges on the network or to remove these decentralized ne exchanges from the network. So this issue here is going to face all the blockchains out there. So I'll talk about Ethereum network soon. I'll talk about Binance network soon because I'm already seeing a little bit congestion growing on the Binance uh, smart chain as well. So let's talk, talk about that one next. So let's talk about the liquidity on Ethereum. As you can see, the liquidity on Ethereum based uh, uh, decentralized applications is $39 billion. But on uh, Binance Smart Chain, that is already $3 billion and growing super fast. And that's one of the reasons why the price of BNB has grown so much. But if we take a look at Ethereum unique addresses, you would probably think that the reason why the network is congested is because there's so many users in there. So let's take a look. The number of addresses on Ethereum is 136 million addresses, but on Binance, that is 1.3 million addresses. So 100 times less addresses on Binance Smart Chain. Just remember that number. But if we take a look at the daily transaction count on Ethereum, that is 1.3 million transactions because they can only broadcast about 15 transactions per second. And that's basically the limit. The gas fee is not as much of a limit because there's so many arbitrage opportunities on Ethereum. But if we compare that to Binance Smart Chain, you have 1.6 million transactions, which is 25% more transactions than on Ethereum. But it has 100 times less addresses than on Ethereum. So that just to me tells me that there's already a lot of arbitrage bots running on the Binance Smart Chain uh, to run these uh, arbitrage opportunities. And this is also true on the Tron network, by the way. If you take a look at that one, there's not that many active users on Tron network, but there are a lot of bots running on the Tron network as well. So this is uh, causing some issues here. Of course, if we take a look at the Ethereum network utilization chart, this basically just tells us how congested the network is. Recently, this is almost at 98% all the, all the time because there's just so many arbitrage opportunities for these uh, bots to run them and they don't really care if the gas fee is uh, $50 or $100 as long as the arbitrage opportunity is higher than the gas fee. So as you can see, the network utilization is at a maximum here. And on Binance Smart Chain, the network utilization is already almost 20%. So if the network has five times more transactions per day on Binance Smart Chain, then we are all almost at a full capacity on Binance Smart Chain as well. So Binance Smart Chain will get con congested from this as well. And you also have to remember that because this is an uh, exponential problem, uh, it, if you even have 100,000 transactions per second, it doesn't matter because it's just so profitable for people to run these arbitrage opportunities and to run uh, or to fork these new exchanges here all the, thing, all the time. So even if you can do 1 million transactions per second or 100,000 trillion transactions per second, you cannot compete with the exponentially growing uh, congestion rate. So you probably already understand that if there's a blockchain that can somehow govern this thing from not happening to basically block the transactions here or to block the uh, the birth of new forks or something like that or a governance system to take a look at like hey you don't have any original idea so we're not gonna let you run a a, a bot here or a, we cannot we cannot let you run a decentralized exchange that is pretty much the only way to prevent this or we have to invent a blockchain that doesn't have any gas fees and doesn't get congested from the usage of that network. Those are basically the only ways to prevent this from happening. I don't have an answer to what kind of a blockchain would be something that uh, can actually prevent these from happening. 
But if you have any ideas, let me know. Polkadot could be one, but I am not too familiar with Polkadot right now. So you have to tell me in the comments if they actually can block these uh, uh, systems from not working or these decentralized exchanges from coming just to fill more arbitrage opportunities for the arbitrage potters. Anyway, that's basically the issue here. Now let's talk about some of the symptom symptoms that we have seen. I have talked about the, what is it, the gas fee farming, that you can earn money by spending gas on the Ethereum network. And this is one way that people try to go about the problem. And I promise I will talk about this project here on Monday's video, but I cannot talk uh, anything good about this. So I will not tell you guys to participate in the pre-sale, which happens today because I will personally not participate in the pre-sale just because the tokenomics of this pre-sale did not make sense to me. So I'll not go about telling exactly why I'm not participating in it. You can choose for yourself if you want to or not, but I'm personally not participating in the pre-sale. But uh, this is just one uh, symptom that we can see that people try to, okay, if the gas fees are high, maybe we can create a token that you can earn cash back for the gas fee. And uh, yeah, you have all these different gas fee tokens. You have four now, and those are giving combined total of 350%, whatever. But this is uh, something I'm not participating, uh, just so you know from Monday's video. Next, there's one opportunity I want to talk about, which is called uh, VAX token or VAX blockchain. Why am I talking about this? Well, if you take a look at the number of accounts on VAX blockchain, it's 600,000 accounts. But if we take a look at how many transactions or unique active wallets are per protocol, you can see on Binance Smart Chain, it is almost the same amount according to DAP Raider than on VAX. So VAX is the uh, green number, uh, the orange number here. Ethereum is, what is it, the blue one. EOS is the purple one. But on VAX, you can see that the network is actually growing quite rapidly. And if we take a look at, it had 145% growth on the network, but the price is not really moving here yet. So if we take a look at the price, the price is not doing almost anything here. Let's take, actually take a look at the one year chart. So the price is not doing anything yet. So this could be an opportunity to actually go into, the, into this uh, blockchain. And what is VAX blockchain? It is basically a blockchain for gaming, for NFTs. So they have working games here already. And I think the most popular game had like 10,000 active addresses. It's, I remember it was like World of Alien Worlds. It has 10,000 active wallets and 19 million transactions on that game. So I don't know, this one will get congested as well. As you can see, the maximum transactions per second is 340. And you can see that there's already like four, 10, 12, 20 transactions happening every single second. So this will get congested eventually as well. But I think in the short term, this could be potential just because the growth is real, but the price hasn't moved yet. So I just wanted to showcase that there's uh, this opportunity. It was shown to me on Telegram. So I just wanted to share that as well. This is not really... Uh, <laughs> related to this issue here, but I just wanted to showcase that there's uh, another opportunity that I happen to see as well for you guys. Anyway, in the short term, I do believe that the Binance Smart Chain and the BNB and the tokens over there can go up in price. But when there's a new blockchain uh, like Cardano, they said that their smart contracts will go live on March. The same problem will just go over there as well. And I think that the Cardano price will go up because arbitragers and the uh, whales will want to move over there because the opportunities are really good on networks that don't have this congestion problem and new projects probably want to launch on platforms that don't have this congestion problem to attract liquidity faster and easier. So I think Cardano will do good, but this problem here is going to persist no matter what, and it will congest the whole Cardano network as well from the exponential increase as well. I think I've gone long enough for this video. I hope you understood some new things about the blockchain. And please leave me the comments down below if you think there's a blockchain that can somehow circumvent through this massive problem that we are currently seeing. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Consider subscribing and I will see you on the next video.